Today we are going to have a sparkling day. So today we are going to build the most random ass PC that I could come up with to have some system inside of this Intertech Airstream, I think, yeah, Airstream IT3503, something about that. And it's a very special case, it's one of the most anticipated cases for myself of the end of the year, which turned out not to be as cool as I thought. The idea here was a bit like the older Cooler Master cases where you had giant fans in the front. And so does this case. The problem or the difference between a Cooler Master case and this case, however, is that it's just a 140mm case and they slapped 200mm fans on it. So it's basically obstruction all over the place, which just doesn't make sense. And because it doesn't make any sense, I thought, yeah, let's build a PC that doesn't make any sense. So uh, this is going to be the topic for today's video. It doesn't make any sense. So platform-wise, we are going back to AM4. We are going to use the B550P. PG Riptide because it's very budgety, it's very inexpensive, it's very affordable, it's, uh, it will work. And we will pair that with a Ryzen 5800X3D, so a extremely budgety case with one of the best CPUs for gaming on the market, uh, which doesn't make a lot of sense. But then, to top it off, we are going to use this Xilence M704 Pro ARGB cooler because it has the same type of ARGB that the front of the case does and it doesn't make a lot of sense. Now this is a good cooler, don't get me wrong, but uh, it is a very, very beefy CPU, so I'm not even that sure if this will work at all. Possibly it will, possibly not. That's going to be interesting. But to make it even more it doesn't make any sense, we are going to pair that with my brand new 4080 Phantom for from Gainwatt. Oh my god, is this a giant, a beautiful GPU. Oh my god, and look at this octopus, the tangles. Why the fuck does this even exist? So it's one giant, giant thing, and, and oh my god, look at the back. This, this, this thing looks amazing. And because it's a 4080, because it's a uh, GPU built, how GPUs are built nowadays, we are going to need something else from the box, which now apparently has become mandatory with every GPU. Usually found within the accessories box, a little GPU anti-sack stand, because otherwise everything will break. And how does this work? Okay, this makes sense, we have one, <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, you have me until here, yeah? But where does this mount? I have no clue how to install this or what this screw is for. Okay, this screw goes here, but where do you mount all of that crap? I have no freaking clue. We will find out during the build. So, the 4080, which is a giant freaking box, two random SSDs that we need for storage and the games that we have for benchmarks later on. Then we are going to use for RAM the uh, Pinnacle Conduit because they are still one of the best RAMs that we have in-house. So we have the best performing PC in, inside the worst possible case. Everything makes a lot of sense until now. And a set of uh, BitPhoenix Spectre... Yes, fans, because uh, they are the most random fans that I found and they are not particularly quick or high performance, so this is going to be perfect for this. Uh, for the power supply, we have actually something new, because Be Quiet sent one of their system power supplies, and this one is a bit special. It's usually um, thought to be used by OEMs, so there is really nothing special about those. No modularity, no extra features except for the usual like be quiet type of performance. We have platinum rating, I think? Gold rating. We have gold rating, which considering that it's going to be used by OEMs is already something. However, they are still selling those independently and the point of course being they are extremely affordable, cutting down on basically everything except for the power supply. And something that's quite interesting, if you have a look at the blades, it kind of looks like there is a Silent Wing 4 inside of this. Whereas older power supplies, because they're not updated yet, all have like Silent Wing 3s. Uh, I'm not sure, I won't open it and uh, double check, that's not for today's video, but it's, it's interesting. Now the only thing that I do need to check is if we have enough VGA cables uh, to get this going, we need at least three, but given that it's a 850 watts power supply, I kind of believe it is. Okay, we have two VGAs, 
with a splitter attached. Uh, so we're going to need to use a least one splitter, which is not ideal, I know, but we're still going to do it because the PC doesn't make any sense for today. Uh, at least that is consistent. Okay, I think everything is ready. So it's time to build uh, the most nonsense PC of this year. So in addition to the front of this case being just for show, because let's be honest, if you have not if even particularly good 140 millimeter mounts, 200 millimeter fans will just, you know, hit the wall creating more noise, unnecessary noise, and you will win basically nothing. You, uh, this snapping fans onto everything doesn't make a lot of sense if there is no way for the air to get in or out. So uh, the front of this case is just for show and that's the nicest way of putting it. But in addition to that already being a problem in my opinion, oh yeah and this was also the case that forgot to put like half the ATX spacers. Oh my god. The problem is for me it's not like just a bit stupidly designed. It's also that the rest of the case is actually surprisingly good given that it is a very budgety or it's aimed at to be very budgety. Like the quality is okay, the top mounting, there is a shit ton of perforation coming from the very bottom of the case, like everything is mesh and the air can travel up the PSU shroud which also has a shit ton of holes, it even has fan spots and all of that good stuff. And all of that is actually quite well designed, even the top has is, is so oversized that you can fit 160mm Silverstone fans in here. The case is not like as a whole unusable, not at all, but it's just the smaller things like the front that is it's just for show and then why pay 70 bucks for a case where half of it is just for show or the main feature of it so i just don't get it i don't get what intertech thought they would do here and if they would have combined that with like a 50 euro price tag okay i get it i i understand it's just for show and you're paying a show price wow there are even more atx spacers missing. Uh, yeah, I, I won't even bother installing them. So you can see again the, the top, like it's very meshy, it's very air pass through e and everything works surprisingly well. It's just the front. It, it is so stupid, it annoys me. Now the next thing that annoys the crap out of me inside this case is this freaking controller. It is both good and bad. It is powered by SATA, which considering its intertech wasn't always a given. A uh, year ago or one and a half years ago, it would still be Molex, which is a problem on its own. But if you look closely at it, it has motherboard ARGB pass-through. That's the thing, yeah. But what it doesn't have is any sort of fan speed control pass through. So what will happen if you use it is that the front fans will just spin at 100% permanently, which really isn't what uh, you what you want at all. I just I just don't get it. But hey, it's it's not my case. Poor little octopus. Okay, now, now comes the part where I had to triple check yesterday if it really does fit. And it does fit. It might look weird and borderline dangerous, but it does fit. And you need to tilt it before putting it in. Yes, this is... This is basically the new norm. Nowadays, I will put in all the GPU screws. The times of, yeah, one will do it or 100% over. Oh, I hate that stupid octopus. It's too short to be used like through that thing and it's, and the connections are too thick to just pass through any hole. And now, how did they, was, was it supposed to be used like that? 
it does it, it does keep the GPU in place. It just looks ugly as hell. Okay, let's have a look at this. So it's a PC. As it turns out, it's it's weird. Many things I, I learned today. First off, I learned those fans are still way too loud. I, I can hear them. Maybe you can hear them. But we did a lot of benchmarks, we did a lot of uh, thermal benchmarks, and it's uh, very, very interesting. So first off, we did Fermark uh, at 4K, 8 MSAA, and added to that the CPU burner test. And the P CPU started out great, it was like 84 degrees C, and then I realized that it slowly and slowly and slowly went up until it hit like 90 something, 90.4 I think, and from there it stagnated there. Now, my issue with this is I can feel that there is not enough air going through the case. Um, if you put your hand like behind the back fan, behind the, the top fan, there is not enough going out. So I, I could already see how it, the, the heat was just building up and building up until it reached 90. So I agreed, like, I think like 80, 85, 85, maybe 87 degrees C are achievable inside this this case with better fans and maybe with a more intelligent front fan setup but it's not it's not that bad the gpu on the other hand was sitting at 54 degrees c so the gpu was is is very very fine that's all right of course i could now put in better exhaust fans i could and and that would probably already help but i think the main problem is the front like there is just not enough air moving in and out it that's just how it is. Now another thing that I learned, uh, very very interesting, is uh, within all the benchmarks, but first have a look. So the thing that I learned is that this thing is still GPU bound. All of the benchmarks were done at 4K highest preset without RTX, like for example in Cyberpunk. I, I didn't use like the RTX preset on Ultra, but like the regular one. And in all cases, it was always GPU bound. Like in Metro, 60 to 100. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the CPU was sitting at about 30, mid 30. Far Cry, low 30s. And Cyberpunk was even sitting as low as 20. 20% 20 on the CPU and the GPU was just balls to the wall, there was nothing else to do. Also quite interesting, uh, without a like synthetic workload punishing the CPU for even existing, like during the games, the CPU never went above 60 degrees C. So the system as a whole works perfectly fine, it's just not, you know, like an editing PC where you just render for eight hours straight then the cpu will thermal throttle but in the gaming it works it works fine 60 degrees c on the cpu is very very much all right so performance wise it's a it's a banger of a pc it's kind of weird it's like a a budget build where the only important factor was performance i got one of the beefiest gpus the second beefiest gpu and one of the best gaming cpus so uh, that combination alone and then I just added a bunch of more stuff. Just, you know, everything was optional. Like, this this thing reminds me of my youth. Getting the best GPU that I can afford, getting the 
close the CPU that I can afford and then everything else is optional. Like in my times, even a case was optional. Sometimes it was just sitting on the, on the desk, I didn't care. So yeah, this is a weird ass PC, but I still believe the case would have had so much more potential if the front wasn't so devastatingly stupid. But uh, that's just how it is. The numbers are still interesting. It's still a heck of a good gaming PC, but just overall a bit stupid. But yeah, what do you think about it? What do you think about giant uh, fans? Do you want to see more 200 millimeter fan cases? Like I think the concept is interesting or it is. Like for example, you have those big ass Noctuas and you can push so much air at such low RPMs and therefore also very low noise but it's like there are just not a lot of cases adapting this idea and I just don't really get why. There is still a lot that can be done in that form factor, but what do you think about it? But for today, this is going to be it. But if you want to continue watching, have a look at this video. It's also, uh, it wasn't a train wreck, not, not like, like this PC. But yeah, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.